Let's start here. Gabby Petito would have turned 25 years old this March. March 19th was her birthday. But her exuberant young life instead took a tragic series of turns, and she died at the hands of her boyfriend, the man that she was planning to marry. Brian Laundrie is that killer. He murdered Gabby, and he left her body in a national forest in Wyoming. That was August of 2021, when Gabby was just 22. And we know Brian was guilty because of the evidence, circumstantial and otherwise, but mainly because he admitted it, writing a detailed confession in a notebook as law enforcement was closing in on him. But then he disappointed a lot of us by denying a murder trial and denying justice. Laundry killed himself in that nature preserve near his Florida home. And since then, the FBI has periodically shared with the public some pieces of their investigation. And today, they released some truly jaw-dropping items collected in the laundry home in Florida. This is one of them that was made public today for the first time. A full-page drawing by laundry, a skull, and the words kill over and over again, along with the words trust no one. Investigators also recovered brass knuckles and hundreds of bullets with a crossbow that had a scope attached to it. There is a copy of the novel Choke. That's about a man that pretends to almost die and then takes advantage of the people who save him. And there are several more books that were hollowed out, apparently to use them as hiding spots. But the most chilling evidence from the grab bag that was released today are words from Laundry himself, reportedly written in the months before he and Gabby even started dating officially. He writes this. About a year ago, I went into a type of mania where I was smashing holes in the wall with my head, kicking through paintings, tearing whatever I was working on, pouring gasoline on myself to burn alive, but getting the lighter wet parking out in Murderland and listening to Mac DeMarco with a gun to my head, wrestling alligators. I wanted to die. And the weird thing is, nothing's changed, but the timer is running down. Over the weekend, I had that great pleasure of spending time with Gabby Petito's parents and step-parents at CrimeCon in Nashville and meeting her brother as well. And they are kind enough to join me now live. Gabby Petito's mother, Nicole Schmidt, her father, Joe Petito, her stepmother, Tara Petito, and stepfather, Jim Schmidt. And we're also pleased to be joined by Gabby's brother, T.J. Schmidt, for his first national interview since the tragedy happened. Thank you, all of you. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to see you today. And it was really such a wonderful chance to get together um, over the weekend and spend some time. And I'm very thankful that we were able to talk and have a drink and, and just, um, you know, see each other in a different environment than we're seeing each other now. But I do want to get your reaction. And Joe, I'll begin with you. This, this sort of incredibly strange and disturbing evidence um, that we learned um, from the FBI today, I understand it was, it was new to you guys as well. It was new. Um, none of us have seen that before. And it was upsetting, you know, but it's I guess it's it's pretty clear, at least in my opinion, or I would say our opinion, that Brian was probably having some type of mental health crisis and uh, might have, might have, you know, would have been positive to him to get that type of help. Nicole, as Gabby's mom, as you look back, do you think that Brian was hiding um, those extraordinarily troubled thoughts that it was almost impossible to see red flags in him? Absolutely. The Brian that we saw was not the things that we learned about today. That was the first time, like Joe said, that we seen that. Actually, when you just read it in the beginning of the show, that was the first time I heard those words because earlier in the day when it came out, I didn't actually read it. But um, yeah, it's it's just hard to hear. Um, I think there was definitely a mental health crisis going on there and could have been taken care of. TJ, um, it was really nice meeting you. Um, it feels like it was like only a few hours ago, but I think it might have been a little over like 24, 48 hours ago. I can't even count at this time. And you've been really behind the scenes. Very few people have heard from you um, since the tragedy of losing your sister. But you were front and center um, at the Gabby Petito Foundation booth at CrimeCon, and you had a lot of people uh, coming by your booth. I wanted to just get your feeling and, and your thoughts about what it was like to 
to sort of come in contact. And there's you with a volunteer who was with you, but um, to come in contact with so many people who were at CrimeCon who, for, for lack of a better description, kind of wanted to share the love and, um, and let you know how much they support you and your family. What was that like, TJ? It's uh, it really truly is an amazing community, and like like you said, everyone that comes up really just wants to help, and they're they're so nice. And when they share their stories, or when another victim comes up to me and says that my sister's story was the one that got them out of their horrible relationship, then like th those are the things that keep us going. They give us all the energy and you know everything. It just it's all the motivation we need. So Tara, I'm gonna get you to jump in as well. Um, and then Joe, I'm gonna ask you a little bit more too, and, and Jim, but um, you guys were all wearing these black t-shirts and I think you might be wearing them now, although our banner is sort of covering uh, what you have on. Is it the Burn After Reading t-shirts that you those, have on? Not those, Ashley, not those. <laughs> not, okay, all right. It was hard to, <laughs> you've got the foundation t-shirts, but at one point at the, um, at the convention, you guys had Burn After Reading t-shirts. And, you know, for those who weren't familiar, that was the, that was, you know, that was etched in the letter that Roberta Laundry wrote to her son, Brian Laundry, saying basically, um, you know, I'll have a shovel for you and a file in the cake if you're ever, um, you know, in, in trouble and behind bars. And then burn after reading. There's the letter. There it is right there. Gosh, it's so great to see you guys together doing that. Um, but I do want to ask you, Tara, what... Tell me a little bit about that, the idea behind it, and what it was like to be able to give, as a, a family of four parents, the victim's impact statement. Well, that is why we wore um, those shirts. Um, we wore them while we were reading our victim impact statement. Um, my victim impact statement was directed straight towards Brian himself, um, what he has put our family through, the pain that um, has caused us, um, but this was a little, I guess, burn towards Roberta. Um, that's why we had to wear them. They're also, they are up and on Jim? our store. Yeah. Um, so people oh, can good. go there. Oh, okay. and people can go there to purchase them. That's the other them. interesting and thing. They all go, yeah, all, you all guys were like, go to the foundation. So the, exactly what I wanted to say at your booth at the foundation, there was merch being sold and Jim weigh in on what people, you know, what their reaction was, people wanting to sort of be a part of your movement. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's two years in a row we've been there. Uh, just more and more people each year keep coming up, wanting to do something, wanting to help. And uh, this year we were thankful that uh, we were able to drive a lot of them to the foundation store to raise some money. That money goes directly towards a lot of the programs we're looking to do, which include uh, prevention and education programs for schools that we're working on. We have some uh, meetings uh, coming up very soon to get those going. We got some training going for domestic violence for first responders, as well as some uh, some much needed work in the missing uh, missing persons realm. So, all of those people coming up, uh, every every dollar they spend is going to help support those programs, and we are grateful for it and uh, really really hoping to make a big impact. So, I want to ask you a little bit, Nicole, about um, the the statements that you guys made over the weekend, super profound yeah. and really, really moving. Also very newsworthy. And I want to just draw our viewers' attention to the fact that you said that you forgive uh, Brian Laundry. That, that was really surprising. I'm going to read your actual words here. You said, I speak for myself here. When I say, Brian, I forgive you. I needed to release myself from the chains of anger and bitterness that I refuse to let your despicable act define the rest of my life. Your atrocious decision to take a life, my daughter's life, has ignited a fire within me, a fierce determination to protect the innocent from falling victim to monsters like you. And then you turned your attention in your statement to um, Brian Laundrie's mother, Roberta, and you said this. I see no empathy in your eyes, no remorse in your heart, and no willingness to take responsibility for your actions. You do not deserve forgiveness. You deserve to be forgotten. So I guess it's, it's two questions here, um, Nicole. One is how did you arrive, wow, at forgiving Brian? And then do you think you're ever going to hear from Roberta Laundry? So uh, I get this question uh, over the last 
48 hours, <laughs> but um, it's really for me, the forgiveness. Um, I, I feel like it, it was something for me to let go of and it was a way for me to move forward. Um, it, with Roberta, I, it, it says it in the statement. I really, I don't think that she's deserving of any more attention um, or deserving of, you know, being in my space and in my head. So I let that go and I just don't want to think about her anymore. I'm moving forward either way without that forgiveness uh, for what she had done. But um, yeah, I'm not going to think about her anymore. I think that's probably pretty healthy, um, frankly, you know, knowing what you guys have gone through. TJ, I think about you and uh, your sister, man, those pictures of her. She's just such a joyous spirit. And I don't even know her. I just feel like I can see it through the, the photos. And I was wondering, as a brother, do you recall the last time you spoke with her and what your conversations were? Um, I actually do, yes. Uh, it was she was just leaving for her trip so of course it was uh, very much about that but it was also i had just graduated high school so she was telling me good luck with you know being an adult and finally being in the real world stuff like that so that was um that's that's most of what i remember from our last conversation <laughs> it's awesome how much you guys look alike i'm just looking at the picture and you can certainly tell that you guys are siblings and uh yeah. Looks like you have the same smile as well. Um, real quickly, Joe Petito, give me the information for the foundation for our viewers. Well, you can go to the GabbyPetitoFoundation.org, see a lot of the stuff that we're doing, trying to do, advocate for, you know, so. But because of kind of the stuff that you discussed earlier, could you put up a number for us? Uh, and that is a the substance abuse and mental health hotline, which uh, obviously, listen, mental health, you want to help domestic violence? It, it starts with mental health, you know, just the same. So 1-800-662-HELP is a number that you can start and, and, and look for, you know, help to, to get the services you need to, to take care of what's going on up here. Because that's, that's for everybody, you know. So that's an important number to have. So thank you for putting that out there. Hey, we, uh, we got your back and we, we were thinking two steps ahead. We knew that that was something that would be important as we make these um, really tough topics sort of known uh, to our viewers. But I am so thankful uh, to you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. And it was great meeting you. I keep saying it and I'll say it early and often. Uh, Joe, Nicole, Tara, Jim and TJ. Best to you and let's um, let's stay in touch, okay? Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you. So much. Thank you, Ashley. All right, you guys, take care. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.